this video we're going to take a brief look at this. If you don't recognize this then it's uh, actually a crystal radio. Uh, this is almost exactly 100 years old. Uh, these were manufactured back in the uh, early to mid 1920s. This particular one dates back to around 1923 and it is a British Thompson & Houston Type C crystal receiver. I'll just pop the cover open. You can see very nicely made and uh, I do have the insert. This is a radio I'm currently restoring. I do have the insert that's um, being pressed. I'm pressing it flat. It was in very poor condition and um, just looking at the uh, plate inside. I don't know if you can read that um, but it's a Type C uh, Form B and the number just says A, so it's strange that um, the uh, number uh, it seems to be incomplete. Um, but it's um, the Type C was made in various formats, which is what the form refers to. And this particular one, as you can see, is uh, quite simple. These are very nicely made. Um, they have a very nice feel to them. And uh, as I say, it's a crystal set, so. Uh, the frequency range, they actually specified it in wavelength back then rather than frequency and uh, they um, specified uh, around 300 meters to 450 meters and that equates to approximately 650 kilohertz up to a megahertz and um, this particular one was referred to as the Bijou um, type and um, they were sold under the trade name of Radiola it was manufactured in rugby by a British Thompson Houston company um, but they made a whole range of um, electrical equipment back then from electric motors through to control systems um, but as I say this is a crystal set there are no um, active parts in here unless you include the uh, cat's whisker um, which as you can see uh, is not here unfortunately I don't have one so um, it's something I'm on the lookout for I may have to manufacture uh, a replacement uh, using a, a bit of uh, crystal. You can still get the crystals fortunately um, but um, not in the uh, or very rarely in the form that will fit into a radio like this but they are quite easy to make up. Um, instead uh, for testing this I've been using a germanium diode which we'll have a look at in a few minutes um, but before then I thought what we would do is uh, pop the cover off and you can have a look and see what's inside one of these. Okay, so this just lifts out and all that's inside here is thick Bakelite top or Paxilene top and there are just two coils in here or four coils uh, separated in the centre. The inner coil rotates inside the outer coil and that is how tuning is affected. It's just basically uh, altering the relationship between the two coils. So all that's in here are the two coils, a nice mechanical arrangement for rotating the inner coil and then a couple of capacitors. These uh, flat uh, uh, assemblies here are actually capacitors, multi-layer, so it's, um, it's mica sheets separated uh, by foil or foil separated by mica sheets depending on how you look at it. So there are two of those. Uh, so I do have the insert for the lid that has the circuit diagram but very simple it's just a tuned circuit and um, uh, capacitively coupled through the uh, detector uh, to the output terminals dual band so it's got uh, two frequency ranges that it will operate on and um, as i say that's all that's in here uh, there are no active amplifiers so the output is extremely low uh, you need something like a hundred foot um, aerial to get anything on this and even then it's uh, very quiet. Now of course the problem these days in trying to test something like this there are very few uh, terrestrial stations still transmitting and uh, most that do transmit send out uh, digital content so you can't actually pick it up on something like this anyway. But luckily there are still some um, stations around that we can pick up so what we'll do is we'll hook this up and see if we can actually pick anything up with it. So I'll just get it reassembled and uh, we'll see if we can detect any uh, uh, radio stations. Got it reassembled. 
For this um, receiver to work, we obviously need something to replace the missing um, detector, the cat's whisker um, diode. So what I use are uh, old germanium diodes. Um, if you do get something like this, or if you're building a crystal radio, it almost certainly will not work with a silicon diode. And um, before we hook this up, I'll just demonstrate why that is and why you need to use uh, a germanium diode, or better still, an original uh, cat's whisker. So I'll just get the curve tracer onto the bench and we'll uh, throw these uh, into that and compare a silicon diode with the germanium type. I've got my 577 curve tracer set up. Currently I have a silicon diode um, inserted and I've got the tracer set up to uh, apply voltage across the diode and we're going to be looking at the forward voltage drop through the diode or across the diode. So we've got zero volts on the left hand side of the trace and um, I've got it set up for 0 0.1 volts per division. So if we turn this on you can see that we're getting around 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 volts um, before we get to the knee, uh, that is before the diode starts to conduct. Now this means if we try and use this diode as um, a detector then the signal level would have to be at least 0.4 to 0.5 volts before we started to see anything on the output of the diode. In other words, um, it, for a crystal set, because the signal level is so low, it would effectively block the signal we're trying to uh, demodulate. So silicon diodes are not really very useful for this type of application. So instead, what we would tend to use is something like a cat's whisker, or failing that, a germanium diode. So I'll swap out the silicon diode, we'll put in the germanium and see how that compares. So pop that in, switch it back on, and as you can see, the voltage to the knee is less than 0.1 volts. So it's very low, it starts conducting almost immediately. And that means that the signal uh, level that um, we can use this diode for can be extremely low and it will still work reliably as a, a demodulator or detector. So that's why we use uh, germanium types. It gives us a much better um, sensitivity, if you like, for the receiver. I'll put the silicon back in. You can see, again, around 0.5 volts and back to the germanium and you can see the difference. So that's why we use the germanium types. It just gives us much better um, sensitivity and we don't need as big a signal coming out of the crystal radio. Okay, now I did say this was a crystal set and didn't have an active amplifier. Normally what you would do is just hook up some uh, high impedance phones uh, or earpiece to the output. Um, but unfortunately you won't be able to hear anything if I did that. The level is so low that uh, my camera microphone will not pick it up. So what I've done instead is just hook this up to a very simple, uh, this is an audio amplifier, it's just a, a transistor and a few resistors. And um, that will amplify anything coming out of this, uh, hopefully up to the level that you can hear. Um, crystal radios need a very good signal all the energy that uh, we use normally to hear the, uh, the transmissions, the reception is coming from the antenna. And also we need a good ground. So for the ground, I'm using my lab bench ground. I've got it connected to the ground terminal on my uh, bench uh, transformer. And the antenna is about 100 feet of wire. This goes out of the uh, window to our left and then it's just draped across um, part of my garden. I've used one of the germanium diodes as the cat's whisker and a very crude arrangement I've got here. Like I said, I'm still really restoring this and um, it should work fine. We've got two bands, as I said, but there's a lot of overlap. There's a, the discrimination of this uh, receiver is fairly poor. It's not going to give us um, uh, lots of different channels. And in fact, if you have a strong local um, uh, station, that's probably all you'll be able to pick up because that will drown out everything else. It can't, this set cannot really filter out and discriminate uh, 
more distant, weaker signals from local strong ones. Okay, so it's already working, it's just that uh, you can't hear anything, we don't have um, a, a headset uh, hooked up. Um, so I'm going to power up the um, amplifier now. The power supply does not power the radio, there is no power going to this radio. The power I'm about to switch on is only for this amplifier. And uh, like I said, it's not, it's not powering the radio in any way whatsoever. All it's doing is it's enabling you to hear what would normally come out of this radio without any power whatsoever. So there's no batteries in this, doesn't need batteries. Um, the entire output comes from the energy derived from the antenna. So uh, don't get sidetracked with the power supply, that's just to enable me to make this video. So I'll power it up now and we'll see if we can tune in any stations. I'll move the microphone nearer to the speaker so hopefully you can hear it better. Okay, well hopefully you could hear some of that. Um, it is working, it's picking up some stations, it's picking up some stations quite clearly. Um, it's middle of the afternoon here so it's probably the worst time for reception. Uh, late in the evening um, we'll get much better reception with this and um, it's, it's just the nature of uh, radio communications that uh, with limited uh, reception and amplification that you do rely on very good uh, incoming signals. But it is surprising after a hundred years that this can still pick up a modern radio station, you know, multiple radio stations. We can tune it in, we can get fairly clear audio, it was um, distorted, that's mostly uh, most of the noise is because I'm using just an ordinary uh, bipolar transistor, it's not a low noise type and I've got it set up for very high gain so it's giving us a lot of uh, background hiss and cracks and uh, pops and that sort of thing. Um, but the uh, when you put headphones directly into this the quality of the reception is surprisingly good. Um, unlike uh, the transistor radios where you have distortion and noise from the various components because this is just really passing straight through what it's getting from the antenna the quality of the sound tends to be very good. It's very low level, but the uh, signal uh, quality, the clarity, is, is often quite uh, surprising. Um, so I thought I'd show this. It's quite interesting. It's coming up to its 100th birthday, and um, crystal radios are uh, one of those uh, fascinating uh, areas of electronics. You don't need batteries, you don't need power. As I said, forget the, the fact that I've got this powered up. This is just so that you could hear it in this video. Uh, but normally you can sit with one of these uh, late at night and listen to radio stations and um, it is surprising how well they work and for something of this age um, to still be working and to still enable us to hear modern stations I think is uh, quite remarkable. <laughs> 